what happened today. Tonight we want to talk about influence. Hey, hi Colleen, hi Helena. Good to have you guys on board. Um, we're going to walk into this place of influence. Tell me where you're from. And um, I know some of you are from, but it's good for us to com uh, ask questions, comment, do whatever it takes. Uh, let's get together. Let's communicate together. Let's see God work together so we can see what God is doing. I believe it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. So blessings to you all as you are here. So today I'm going to get right into it because I want to talk about influence. And um, when you look at the social media and you look at everything out there, like you look at the streams of um, news broadcasting, whatever it is, um, what's influencing us? And, and I think that we see a lot of influence happening. So when you go into a place where I watch... You would watch one stream of news compared to a different stream of news. They are so different sometimes. But if you are influenced to one and to the X, then, then, then you look at the other part of the news as false compared to the other news. And so that's influence. You get influenced to the point where you have one perspective instead of looking into the deeper level of what really is happening. So we get influenced quite easily. So we follow influence even within our own lives. We follow it. Um, and so we get into that place of influence. And I feel like that we get influenced even within ourselves. We get influenced. And um, even in ministry, we get influenced. We get influenced in all kinds of things. And so when we get into that place of influence, um, what is influencing us? Um, I want to talk a little bit about that because I believe even as a person, even as a person, we can influence people wrong. Um, we can do a lifetime of good. Hey, Kim and Lisa, hi. Welcome on board. And so even as I find that even if we do lifetime of good, but when we have one source of influence that is negative, it, that carries more value than all that we have done good. And that's with anything. That's with your job. That's with everything there. There's something when, when we in, get influenced in a negative way that it carries stronger and harder. And so somehow we have to get past that point so that we can see the true influence of somebody or something in a deeper way. And so I believe that we need to be as a family, as a people, we need to be able to see our influence. Um, when I, like I was talking to somebody the other day saying, um, when I am, how do you deal with influence? Because when I have somebody come to ministry or you, you, when we talk to each other, um, our troubles to each other, whatever we talk about, um, we get in, we could easily get influenced based on our circumstances. And so a lot of times we get influenced based on circumstances. So I believe God has been showing me and saying that look for the good in somebody. Look and let that influence you. Let the Christ in somebody influence you. Let Jesus be the influence in a person. So in every human nature or in, in every position, in every job or every newscast, whatever, there, we got to find the good so that it would influence us. So even as we talk as a church, we need to find that influence within a person that will overrule the negative influence. Because if we don't, then we're just gonna, we're just not gonna be able to be sharpened and we're not gonna be able to walk in the presence in a stronger way as we need to. Um, so, like I said, when I put these things together, I work through things and then I said, you know what, God, speak to me on how to work with myself. And when I work with myself, I like to share. That's right. Let, I, I think that's one thing I have a we have a problem with. Like, um, let's just go to my own family and and like uh, my own family, like uh, my immediate family or a gathering or something like that. Um, we influence each other. So you go into a big room and you're trying to celebrate Christmas, <laughs> and you, good or bad, you influence somebody. All of a sudden, something reacts, something is said, and all of a sudden that influences you and that triggers you, and it makes you totally believe on somebody different than really what God sees in them. Or something so we need to get into that place of finding how to deal with influence so that we can grow stronger in the season that God has us in and you look at anything um, election wise you look at um, TV broadcasters you look at critics you look at everything they're influenced by 30 second videos um, they, they take clips and they influence people based on that one minute of comment or statement they have and so they, and we, we get influenced based on a quick pass-by of communication, but not the full communication. Um, 
we get influenced by people repeating the same thing over and over again so people will start believing that newscast in spite of all the other stuff around it so we need to find a right influence so that we're not becoming judgmental people and we're not called to be judgmental people we're called to be people that work together and called to be there for each other so i, I often look at this influence and say you know i think many times i give off the wrong influence and i think we all do we all live in the space of giving the wrong influence sometimes and but i think we as people need to look at each other deeper and saying what's really the heart of that person and what's really the influence of the person but let's just go into scriptures a little bit and let's talk about it and, and see what god is going to do in, in this message so i'm going to use the god word version bible on this one first scripture here is proverbs 27 17. proverbs 20 um yeah 27 17 it says as iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens the wits of another i love the way it says the wits which means accountants of another iron sharpens the like if we can have the right influence in our in, in our severe influence and that's so influence in the sphere of influence because we have a surrounding we have the body of christ we have the family we're with we have the church we're with we have the job we are with we have uh, whatever we have the position we are with and um so iron sharpens iron mean that if i can find the right influence in you you're going to sharpen me if you find the right influence in me we're going to sharpen each other and we're going to we're going to put the wits up a little bit and we're going to put our accountants to one another it's it's going to it's going to sharpen our accountants we're going to become wiser we're going to become stronger together we're going to become more of what god has created us together we're going to be amazing together in that thing and so we got to get into that place of saying hmm, hallelujah like i I believe so strongly that influence can be recognized. It only takes one influence to ruin a person sometimes, but it never should, but it does. But we got to create that influence of Jesus Christ. And, and, and if, if what, the, as a, even like our close church family here, when we look at ourselves as a, as a team here, and when we, we look at it, in spite of our circumstances, in spite of everything, we influence each other based on vision, passion for Christ and for what God is doing, which is the move of God. Amen. And so as we are focusing on that, we, we are actually not even seeing, we're seeing the love for each other. We're, we're, we're being influenced by each other's love. We're being influenced by the characteristics of God in each other. We're being influenced by our talents together. We're influenced by the spiritual giftings together. We're influenced in that place together. And what it's actually doing is because we're focused on the true influence, we're, we're, we're removing the negative influence. And so I find that it's an exciting place to be. So let's walk into that. Let's, let's, let's not be quiet. Let's talk it out. And let's say, God, I want to be the right influence to somebody. <laughs> Lord, just bring Jesus out of me so that I shine for someone and for so that they can be sharpened in their day, so their accountants can be lifted up, so they can find some joy that day, and so that we can follow that day. Amen? Hey, just remember to share your comments and questions. You're welcome to do so. And so number one is this. I, I, yeah, I think I have three points I want to bring across today. Don't be influenced of this world. And First Peter two uh, eleven to twelve in the God version, but it it says it there. Don't be influenced of the world. And sometimes we have to be careful, even as uh, believers. It's so easy for us to crack, um, grab influence of the world and become part of the world more than part of the kingdom. And so we fight that battle sometimes because of the influence that we surround ourselves around. And so when we look at the, the surrounding of influence, First Peter, don't be influenced in the world. Yes, number one is don't be influenced of this world, but or by this world. That's a good point too. That works too. Um, First Peter two eleven to, uh, and to twelve. It says this, dear friends, since you are foreigners uh, and temporary residents in the world. I love the way they say it there. And you can read in King James. It says the same thing, except not in the same words. But it says, dear friends, since you are foreigners, we we are just bypassers here. He says, and temporary residence in this world. We have a resident which is in the power of the kingdom, which is in the dimension of Jesus Christ. It's in the dimension of the kingdom of God, which is in the heavenlies. It's, it is a way greater dimension. So we are bypassers. While we are in the dimension of being born again and this finished work, we're in that dimension of Jesus Christ. While we're in Jesus, we are in this world as bystanders. By, we, we are temporary residents in it. 
And so that's a, a good thing to be. And then it says, I'm encouraging you to keep away from the desires of the corrupt nature. These desires constantly attack you. Now, come on, church, let's just be honest. How much does corrupt nature not attack us? Um, as much as holy as we want to be, um, we get influenced by corrupt nature. We get influenced by circumstances. We get influenced by what's happening in the, around us in the world. We get influenced by TV shows, by movies. We get influenced by whatever. We get influenced so much. So long we need to somehow grab a hold of that and say, let's put it back in there. And then it says, these desires consistently attack you, meaning that we are in this world, but we can't get away from the attack of the influence. We can't get away from the corrupt desires around us, and, and but they're constantly, they're constantly, constantly attacking us. And we need to get into this place of saying, we need to get back to finding the right influence so that we can walk through this world, since we're only temporary, so that we can move forward in the kingdom of God and stop holding us back because of influences around us, but to move forward. Amen? Amen, Jake? Amen. <laughs> Number 12, verse 12 of First Peter 2 says, Live decent lives among unbelievers. Now that's more easier said than done, I'm telling you. I mean, decent lives among unbelievers. We do our best, and that's what God expects. Um, he said, let decent lives among unbelievers. Then, although they ridicule you as if you were doing wrong, while they are watching you do good things, they will praise God on the day He comes to help you. And so we got to walk in this place of saying, you know, um, we go into this place of where, where we try to do good among unbelievers. We try to not to live as they do. But we get ridiculed for doing good. We are, we are ridiculed for, uh, we are accused of doing wrong while doing good. And so, that, so there's an influence there. So we got to, it's so hard to walk in the good when you're, when you're constantly have an influence of you doing wrong or you've been told you've been doing wrong. And so when we walk into this place of influence, it's, uh, or this place of, of, of ridicule, it says, don't worry about it. If they keep watching you, and I'm working on this just as much as everybody else. I've got to keep doing good because if I keep doing good in spite of the circumstances that attach to me, that I remove, in spite of that, I have to be an influence. So when they look and when something good happens to me and when God comes to me to help me, they say, wow, God is real. There is something happening in that place. And that's the influence that we want to carry today. I really want to carry that influence because it's... because." ridicule is always going to come and sometimes i just so you know sometimes i deserve the ridicule <laughs> and i think we all do sometimes we do um say things we shouldn't say and do things we shouldn't do but either way when we look at the heart of god when we look at jesus the bible says he looks at the heart of the circumstances and everybody and so i want to see people set free this year i want people to end up this year free indeed I want to see people, so I want to become a church that influences people to freedom, influences them to deliverance, and influences them to a whole new level of spirituality. Amen? We want to walk in that place of His glory like never before. I want to walk into His presence in that sense of it. The number two is this. Staying in righteousness creates the right influence. So I'm, I'm working on myself. I always do. I'm, I'm a kind of person that's, when I feel that I need to work with someone or, or I... Uh, see something I've done wrong or I see how I approach something that I can fix, I will always fix it and I will do my best to fix it. And this is what we need to do. Staying in righteousness. This is the biggest power. Staying in righteousness creates the right influence. Staying in righteousness creates the right influence. So if I want the right influence, I got to stay in his righteousness. I got to stay in his presence. If I want to, if we want to create the right, um, as a church, we got to stay in that place. So number two is that. In 1 Peter 3.14 First uh, Peter three fourteen and fifteen, and this is the, under the English EMTV Bible, English Modern Text Version Bible. Excuse me, sorry. But when if oh excuse me, any comments while I drink water? Any questions? First Peter um, three fourteen to fifteen says this. Yes. So as we go in this place, 
um, verse 14 of uh, 1 Peter 3 says, But even if you should suffer on account of righteousness, you are blessed. This, this is the harder things to do. Is that here, just before this, I was saying how we get attacked because we live in the world. And so, and we get, we get, we get influenced by it. And we also get, um, we suffer because we do the right things. And so we got to walk into the place of saying, okay, God, I got to fight through this and the count of my righteousness or his righteousness, you are blessed. But do not fear their threats, nor be troubled. And so I think as Christians, we have to do this because if we fear, we become troubled. And if we fear, we make mistakes. If we, if we get threats, if I get threats as a pastor in the past where whatever, if I get threats, in the past, I got major threats as, uh, as a ministry. When I did one-on-one -on -one ministry, we got some threats. And that threat, I had to, we had to work past those threats and say, that I'm not getting influenced by those threats. I'm not getting influenced by that trouble. And so sometimes we get into that place where, where we do get feared or we do get threatened. And when we do get threatened, we get influenced by the threats and we actually respond in a place that we wouldn't normally respond. And so we do think we normally wouldn't do. But that's the place of influence, that, that we got to create that place saying righteousness and the counter righteousness, I'm still blessed. I, it doesn't matter what everybody else is saying, doing the right thing is still doing the right thing. Uh, having the right influence is still having the right influence. I still have to walk in that by his power and by his glory in that. So we need to walk into that place and we need to start saying, God, here I am. In verse 15, it says, but sanctify. And this sanctify means to make holy, to concentrate, or to, to, uh, set, to be dedicated, separated, to set apart to God, to purify yourself, to make yourself uh, a conformable uh, character to such a person. So we got to walk in this place of sanctified. He says, but sanctify the, oh, sorry. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Sanctify in your hearts. Make Him holy in your hearts. Separate yourself in your hearts. Even when your body reacts, even though your emotions react, put that heart in the right place so God can function through your place. So you can represent. So if your heart's in the right place, people will always see that influence. People, eventually people will see your heart. Eventually people will see that influence of that heart, even in spite of all the other things. It says, Sanctify the Lord your, heart, uh, Lord your God in your hearts and always be prepared with a defense to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, which means reverence. And so we need to always be in that. We need to be always ready in our hearts. In our hearts, we always need to be ready for anything that comes upon, upon us so that we can bring forth the word of God, so we can bring forth that place we got to keep it in the right place. We really got to keep our heart there. And I, I, it's like King, it's like David. His heart was right, but his actions was terrible. <laughs> it was, they, like his, his actions made him lose things. His action made it, but God redeemed his heart because his heart was in the right place. His heart was after God himself. And that's where we want to be. We want to sanctify our hearts so that our hearts start relying on to everything else we do. So we prepare ourselves in that place so that we can come forth. And so when somebody asks us things, we can have that defense of our heart. We can say, yes, I can. you can actually respond because you have Jesus in your heart. You have Jesus, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the sanctified, you have your, your heart's been separated for God. My heart as a, as a pastor, as a George Blatt, as a father, as a son has been separated to God. I have been born again. I, 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 that's what I live for. No matter what happens around me, that's what I live for. I live for that influence of Jesus Christ. And I think we need to start being more influenced by what he asks us to do and what he is than anything around us. He himself has influenced me and my heart has been changed forever, just like yours has been. And we've been changed and we've been transformed into his presence. And we've been transformed and we've been made new again. And so we are in a new thing right now. And so don't let nothing stop you from loving on that place of Jesus Christ and saying, God, let that be my influence. And uh, let the word of God be my influence. It's so important that we do that. Are you with me, church? And so we go on on that. And, and verse 50... Um, what was I finished there? Yeah, we're going number three. 
Number three, I'm going to talk about how do we correct our influence. So if we've been in the wrong influence or we've been the wrong influence, Usually when you're around the wrong influence, you become the wrong influence. <laughs> Normally that's what happens. Um, normally when you are influenced by the wrong visual things, then you become, um, you, you, you start reacting based on the influence that we have. Influence is a powerful thing, so we might as well use it the right way. We need to look at the influence of saying Jesus. It's our influence, but the thing is that we get influence and it's we, we, we as people reason our, ourselves away from the very thing that we need to be influenced by because of the influence around us. Like you look at this world today where, where, where a lot of things is called hate or a lot of things is called um, good that is bad and the things that are good is called bad. We've been influenced to believe um, that this is okay. And we've been influenced saying this is not okay. It's been okay since over 2,000 year, years ago. The word of God has been okay. It's been the, the bestseller and everything else. It's been a good, th- good book. And for some reason, in our culture, it has changed some of those words to saying it's not so good. But we have been influenced to believe that all the things that we biblically believe are wrong also become good and they become acceptable. That's an influence. Also, the world is influenced and we change based on the influence. And that's what I want to stop with in our personal lives. I can't stop the whole world in that, I don't think. But we can definitely start with our own sphere of influence and saying, where are we influenced? Where can we walk into the presence of God and become stronger people for each other and that we can influence each other in the presence of God and move forward in that? So number three is how to correct your influence. This is how we correct our influence. It's um, 2 Timothy uh, 3, 16 to 17 out of the EMTV Bible. All scriptures is given by... (laughs) In perspiration... I can't say it now. I, I read it before I could say it. (laughs) <laughs> inspiration there we go inspiration of God <laughs> and it is profitable for doctrine all scriptures are breathed and the King James would say I breathe of God they are the breath of God they are breathe of God and it is profitable for doctrine for reproof I like that it's good for reproof so the Bible is reproof the word reproof is a, a proof that by which is a thing is proven and tested or can, has conviction on. So now we have this place of how do we correct our influence? We get back to the Word of God. We get back into the Scriptures. We get back into that place. We have one question. We want to read that. How should we respond when we are standing for righteousness and those close to us accuse us of being too religious? <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what the Bible is saying here. And, and when we look at the, that scripture there, it's that we're going to get accused. We're going we're gonna to have threats of being righteous. We're going we to do it. But the Bible says the only thing we can do is keep doing good so that we have a defense. We have a defense when something happens. The only thing we can do is keep our heart right because eventually they will come to you and they will watch you. And they will say, well, whatever you've been doing has been working. And um, it's hard because... Uh, you know, a lot of times we want to respond like this. This is a good response that we want to say, I'm not religious. I'm a believer. <laughs> no matter <laughs> no matter what you think, you're religious. Because there's such thing as a pure religion. No matter what you think, because you, you when we, uh, a religious status is something that you believe in and do not waver from and you move from that. We're not religious in the wrong sense, but we're not religious to the point where we're man-made rule, but they see it as we're not changing. When people say we're religious, is that this is what you think and you're not going to waver from it, so that must be religion. It's not really religious, but that's what they see it as, but it is a place of relationship. When you know you have a relationship and when you are so strong in your relationship and you are unmovable, and when you are unmovable in what God is doing, then that's when people come against you. And just, just like the Bible says, when you sanctify your hearts, they, then the threats start coming against you. Not necessarily, this is not considered a threat necessarily, but people start calling you religiosity and they start saying, Let's be set free and just love Jesus, just love people. We do that, but we stay strong in the place of righteousness is because it's a relationship. Because when, when there's relationship, we want to have that intimacy with God. We want the right thinking with God. We want the purity of God. We want to walk in the presence of God. So with that said, I don't know if there is an answer to how do, do we do when we're accused of it. 
I think sometimes you just have to say, uh, you just can't really fight that battle sometimes, but I'm not sure how we're going to go about it. Because sometimes, I don't know where there isn't that we're accused of being righteousness is not religious. Religious is a man-made rule. Religiosity is anyway, is man-made or something that is a, is a dictatorship style. Um, so I, I don't know if, if a person could explain to not to be religious, but um, I'm not sure how that would work. But I believe very strongly that we need to just live it because we're going to have those comments at all times. The Bible says that we're going to be threatened and there's going to be trouble by just simply um, on the count of righteousness. And so when it says in verse 14 of um, of 1 Peter 3, it says, uh, Be sanctified in the Lord in your hearts and be prepared for defense um, to everyone that asks you so they meekness. But the fact is this, and before that it says, you know, the righteousness of God, they're going to be a count on it. And so you're going to walk in that place. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but anyway. <laughs> but we do our best there, but... But we should. How do we respond? I think I think you just have to respond with love and say, "I'm, I'm sorry you see it that way. Um, I'm just simply living righteous as I experience God in in His righteousness. I experience God in in that place. My heart is in Him, in that place. But as we go on with this third thing, still, and it, let's just read um, Second uh, Timothy three sixteen to seventeen. All Scripture is given by inspiration or the breath of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. So we've got to look at the profit, what's profitable here. This is a really profitable thing. And we've got to look at the place, and it's reproof. And reproof is a place or a thing that is proven and tested. It's This Bible is proven and it's tested. This Word of God is so proven and tested. And when so, all things go wrong, and to correct your influence, you've got to go back and you've got to reproof yourself. You've got to, you've got to look at yourself. And the, I really, really try hard uh, um, and not in a bad way, but I'm always saying, okay, God, I need to reproof this. If Paul says he had to remove his, renew his mind daily, that means I probably should too, too. If, Paul, if I had to seek the Lord of God with all your heart and with all your strength, that means I need to probably do that daily. And so we have to reproof ourselves. It says reproof for correction. And this word correction is that we need to walk in this place. Um, we look at this place and we go in a, a correction um, reproof for a correction and that word correction there is the restoration to an upright or right state this is that what the bible can do for us and this is what we can do when we walk in a place of saying lord i need to get back in here and reproof myself i need to get back to the proven and test the word of god and i need to bring correction to my system and which is a restoration that word correction means restoration to the upright state again to get me back to where i belong god to to get me back into the right influence which is the word of god to to line me back up again god so that i don't have to be because we all fall out of it but we can always go back to reproof and correction and we can always come back into that place it says first instructions into righteousness this word means to, to cultivate our souls into righteousness. So when we reproof ourselves, when we walk into the profitable doctrine of God, and we walk into the influence of God, we start seeing this instruction that happens to us to get into righteousness. It actually brings cultivation to our soul by correcting our mistakes and curving our passions back into God. That's what this instruction is, that we come back and say, Lord, correct me and put me back into my passions. Put me back into your passions. Curve me back into your calling. Curve me back into your presence like never before. I need to get back into it because something went wrong. My influence was tampered with or I was the wrong influence because of what I was going on, whatever it may be. And so, Lord, let's put me back onto that track. Let's put me back into that place and let curve me back into that place so that I walk fully into your righteousness. Amen? Hopefully you're getting something out of that, guys. Are you getting some out of it, Jacob? Yep. <laughs> and it's, it's this, all scriptures are breathed by God they, and is profitable for doctrine, reproof for correction, for instructions into righteousness. And verse 17 says that the man of God may be proficient, having been thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly <laughs> equipped for every good work. We get so equipped that we walk into that place of walking in the presence of God. Because we take this place of Scripture and we go back to the breath of God, we go back into that place 
and he says every man is thoroughly equipped to the doing the good work of God. Every person, if you made mistakes in your life, no matter what you've done, God is ready to re-equip you to get back into the presence of God, to get back into the anointing, to get back to work again and say, here I am God. Don't let nothing stop you, church. Don't let nothing stop you from going into the presence of God. Don't let nothing stop you from the influence of God. Don't let nothing stop you. It is time to walk forward in spite of the issues around us. And we go back to the influence. What is influencing us today? And we remove the negative influence and say, God, I'm going to look at the right influence of God. Amen? Sometimes we can be influenced wrongly by family members or whatever. We need to start looking in the heart of the, of the people again. We need to start seeing people for who they are and see the heart that's in people and say, God, I want to see Jesus in this person. I want to see that influence because when you start pulling that influence out, that's probably what you're going to get. You're going to get more of the presence of God like you never had before. If you're going to look at news, look at another channel. Look at more than one stream. Don't ever get influenced based on one stream of information. Find more stream of information that you can walk into so walk into that place and find that right influence for yourself whatever decision you're about to make find the right influence so that god can move forward into what is called find the right influence because the first influence if it doesn't feel good start finding another one there within the same situation normally there is the right and the bad influence the wrong influence and the right influence find the right influence and develop your life based on the right influence which is Jesus Christ through all things that he does for you and for us. Amen. Was I done already? My goodness. Oh. So we, let's walk into this place of, I, I myself, I, will, I look at this saying, I need to look at my influence. And I think we all have to look at that and say, what kind of difference am I making out there? When I walk into the store, what kind of influence do I carry? If I walk into a, to a business, what kind of influence am I carrying? Um, if I'm walking to my job site, what kind of influence am I carrying? If I'm, I'm just, uh, if I'm, if I'm walking to another church, what kind of influence am I carrying? Because your influence can change the whole atmosphere of a place. Um, so you gotta say, God, and that's what I've been learning, like especially going to different churches and stuff like that. I've been ch saying, God, I'm not going to, I, I want to remove all, because I think a lot. And I look at how people do things and I say, that should be done, that, whatever, you make judgment calls. And I've been removing all that in the last couple of years and saying, I'm not making a judgment call. I am, I'm carrying Jesus Christ in there and I am not choosing to be influenced by anything negative, but I'm here to, to see what God is doing. I'm here to see what the presence of God is going to release in this place. And when I've done that, I've always seen God at work. God has made great friends out of that just by me changing my attitude about things. And so we've seen some great relationships built just because I walk in and say to accept that there is a difference, but it doesn't, and in the difference, there's good influence if you choose to look at the good influence. Hey man, seeing some comments there. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that we walk in this work of God and and I, I, I think that we're going to a, a place right now as a church, not as a whole, as, as a church as a whole. Um, we need to walk into that place of um, influence and um, we need to walk in the place of bringing Jesus out more alive than ever. And, and But also one thing we have to do is we have to be gracious because because you have to look because we all are humans with troubles. <laughs> and so I have to be gracious at that. And so how, how do I help somebody be delivered without having all that stuff that people confess bother me? I look at the gold in the person. I look at really what God has created them be. be. I, look, I, I try to find that masterpiece that God has created so that that would influence me to help them get out of all this stuff. I get so excited for what people are able to do and what they can become, that everything else doesn't matter to me no more. When, I, when I'm on one-on-one, -on -one, I, I just don't want to see that. I just want to help them. 
I just want to see them release all that. And I want to come to the heart of that and saying, wow, God, I'm, I'm going to be influenced by the person, what they're created to be. And all these things are bystanders. And as long as people are willing to fix it, then I, I consider them, them my friends. And, and because when they're willing to fix it, because we all are in that state, but that's how I see it. And that's why for almost 14 years now that I haven't been influenced by people's issues because I have seen the gold in people. I've seen what I, I try I'm finding what God has created them to be. And so we can go way beyond everything around them and move into the presence of God. And then we can see people become whole and become full of destiny and fully equipped for the presence of God like never before. And that's what we want to do. We want to be that influence. Now, we have a choice what you're going to see. So start looking for the right influence because we're always going to find the wrong influence. We're always going to find it. And there's not one. You're always going to find the wrong thing if you want to look for the wrong if Even if you don't look for the wrong thing, you'll find the wrong influence. And, and so be it. Sometimes it is the bad influence and you should get away from it. I understand that. If it is bad influence, you should get away from it. So let's look at some comments and questions. Anybody out there that have any questions, this is closing remarks here. Okay. Good comments. Thank you, guys. Um, influence and coming to his love and can flow out of me to influence all that has come to contact with me. That's so true. My wife understands me. Mary understands me. I think you all do. Is that I really want that kind of influence that wherever I go, the his influence flows out of me. And that's a working process, but that's okay. We're all good. We're all human. We're good. And we just keep at it because it's your heart. If your heart is in God, it cannot be left out. It can be corrected. It can be it can be reproofed. It can be it can be come back into his presence. It can like as long as your heart is in the right place, you can walk in it. You can do it. You can do it. Amen. Amen, Jacob. Amen. Right, guys, get some loud amens here. Hallelujah. Uh, let's look at here. Um, there you go. Amen, Dennis. Can't read it by his own. Jesus saw. Uh, or Abraham when he healed a crippled woman and he saw a worshiper then delivered Mary to the Magdalene of the Deans. Yes, awesome. Amen and amen. So that's good. Any questions or any comments before we close down? I felt that was okay. Hey, eh? where you did you receive Jacob? Yeah. I'm making him doing all the talking because you guys are not here for doing the talking here, but <laughs> you know. My heart is always to always go back to the scripture and always find find the, find the presence of God like never before. It's really time to, um, like like I say, I'm going to be a pastor that's going to be transparent to a, to a point enough that I'm not going to be so foolish that I'm above everybody else because I'm not. I'm willing to admit it, and we're going to move forward, and we're going to see new influence at all times. I'm going to, we're going to rock this place. We're going to see the presence of God like never before. And we're going to see a breakthrough because, you know what, together we win and together we become better. And we are going to see what God is doing there. God's going to use unperfect people in this place. And He's going to use our influence. And He's going to bring His presence through us. And we're going to see what God is going to do. It's going to be so good, so good, so good. In Jesus' name.